Welcome to our lecture online. We know that 18,000 years ago, the ocean levels were 120 meters, about 400 feet lower than they are today. So where did all that water come from? Well, it turns out that 18,000 years ago was the beginning of the end of the last ice age, which lasted for about 100,000 years. And during those 100,000 years, ice had built up over the years and huge ice sheets covered large, vast areas of North America, Europe, and Asia. There's also some regions such as New Zealand, potentially a small strip of Africa, and the, the uh, west coast of South America that also was probably inundated by large ice sheets built up on the continents. Those ice sheets have since melted, and believe it or not, the land areas where these massive quantities of ice sheets were covering the land, that land currently is still rising up. Essentially, the weight of all that ice had pushed down the land, and now the land is still rising. And when we're measuring the, the ocean levels currently against the land in the northern areas, such as northern Alaska and, and the Scandinavian countries and so forth, well, we actually see that the ocean levels are dropping relative to land because the land is rising. Not at all that ice has melted. But the big question is how much ice had to melt to cause the ocean levels to rise by as much as 400 feet or 120 meters? Well, if we go back and try to figure out how big the oceans are, we realize that the oceans cover about 360 million square miles of surface of the Earth. Oh, I should say square kilometers, which equates to about 139 million square miles. And imagining that countries such as China or the United States are a little bit over 3 million square miles in area, 139 million square miles is a vast surface of the Earth. About 71% of the Earth is covered by oceans. So if we then realize that from 18,000 years ago to about 8,000 years ago in that 10-year period, the ocean levels rose by 120 meters. If we multiply 120 meters by 360 million square kilometers, convert that to, to meters, then we can figure out how many cubic meters of water had to, to melt, or the equivalent of 120 million cubic meters had to melt from the ice. And since each cubic meter of water has a mass of about one ton, we're able to calculate it. And it turns out that 43,000 trillion tons, which is 43 quadrillion tons of ice had to melt. Wow. How much ice is that? Well, if we take the current ice sheet on Greenland and the current ice sheet on Antarctica, I guess I got this in reversed order here. It doesn't matter. Um, if we combine the two large ice caps that cover vast quantities of, of Earth. We have the Antarctic in the south, we have Greenland in the north. That's still an enormous amount of ice, while the amount of ice that melted during that 10,000 year period is almost twice as much as those two giant ice sheets combined. That's a lot of ice. A lot of ice that melted for natural reasons for the change in the climate between 18,000 and 8,000 years ago. 43 quadrillion, 43,000 trillion tons. It is almost beyond imagination how much ice that was covering these vast stretches for millions and millions of square miles of land in North America and Eurasia. That is quite something. That would be something to see happening over that 10,000 year period. Can you believe it?